All righty, we are back. We are doing uh, section 4.3 today. So I want to do a little recap of what we have talked about before. 4.1. 4.1 was saying if we wanted to show two triangles were congruent, we had to check all sides, make sure they were all congruent to all the sides on the other triangle, and then check all of the angles. That was six things we had to check. We're, th we're more efficient than that. We start looking to see if there's any shortcuts. If maybe we can check only sides or only angles or something like that. So in 4.2, what we did was we tried to figure out how many possible triangles could be created with a certain characteristic. Okay, And if it was only one possible triangle that could be created, then we knew that we could use that as a shortcut. For example, if you add a side length of 3, a side length of 4, and a side length of 5, and someone else had a side length of 3, 4, and 5, those two triangles would have to be congruent because how it works is triangles are rigid figures, meaning if you have all the sides, no matter how you press on them, they cannot deform. They cannot change the angles unless you change the sides. Okay, So there's only one possible triangle that you can make, so SSS was enough. Then we looked at what about if you had a side length, a certain angle measure, and then a certain side length. How many possible triangles could you make? Well, it turns out there's only one. This side is kind of locked in place. The only way that this side could be longer is if you change your angle, and we're not allowed to do that. Um, so, or if you changed one of the sides. But we're saying that those three things are already locked into place. Since there's only one possible triangle that can be created with those characteristics, then SAS is good enough to show that two triangles can grow. I would remind you that like SSS, just checking sides, does not work for all figures. Um, it does work for triangles because triangles are rigid figures. But if you had like a quadrilateral and this was 2, 2, 4, and 4, I could go over and make another figure that had those same side lengths but was not congruent to this. For example, that. Okay, They would still have the same lengths of sides, but they're not congruent. So SSS, SSSS would not be a good enough reason if you were trying to prove two quadrilaterals were congruent. Okay, and Once again, that's because this is not a rigid figure. If you pressed in that direction, it would kind of tip like this. The angles can change without having to change the sides. Over here, it's impossible to go over and um, change the angles by just pressing on the figure. All right, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at ASA and AAS. We're going to be seeing having an angle, then a side, then an angle, is that enough? And an angle, and an angle, and a side. This is actually rather difficult to draw. So I'm going to white this out. I'm going to try to draw it. So let's say we had an angle, then a side, then an angle. I'm going to see, okay, I'm saying that this side can keep going as far as it wants, but this angle has to stay at, let's say, 30 degrees. That side has to be 5 inches, and this one can be as long as it wants, but this has to be 50 degrees. Well, how many options do you have for the other side lengths in the angle? You don't have any. This side is going to be locked into place, and this side is going to be locked into place. There's only one possible triangle that can be created um, with an angle, a side, and then an angle. Okay, So what that means is you can now finish a proof with angle, side, angle. And how that works is if two angles of one triangle, uh, two angles and the included side, meaning the side has to be between the two angles, are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles must be congruent. Once again, if an angle is congruent to an angle, the other angle is congruent to its corresponding, and the sides in between, the included, this word right here, I know I wrote it kind of messy because it's tiny, that says included, and the included side are congruent, then the two triangles must be congruent. 
right? The next one is angle, angle, side. It's very, very difficult for me to be able to draw this without having some kind of software, and I don't have the software. It's just difficult to have an angle next to another angle, but not defining that side in there. Um, it's basically, if I had like this angle, it had to be like that, and then a side and another angle. Um, and this side had to be that exact length. How many triangles could be made? Well, we could get this thing and move it over. It would have to be sitting in a certain place so that we don't change this side length. Once again, I know that wasn't the best drawing, but just this one you're going to just have to trust me on. There's only one possible triangle that can be created if you have an angle, then an angle, and then a side, meaning the side is not between the two angles as it is with this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Um, it says if two angles and the non included side, that says non included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the non included side of a second triangle, then the triangles have to be congruent. So a little recap, rather than having to check all sides and all angles, we have learned that S, S, S is enough, just checking the sides. S, A, S is also enough. A, S, A, an angle, then a side, then an angle, congruent to an angle, side, and angle is enough. An angle, angle, side. All of these shortcuts work. We still don't know about um, SSA or um, about AAA, but right now we do know that all of these shortcuts will work. You do not have to check all the sides and all the angles. If you can get to one of these places, you can finish your proof. So let's take a look at this one. Well, I see two angles and a side, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to be ASA or if it's going to be AAS. Which one is it going to be? ASA or AAS? We have that angle is congruent to that one. This one is congruent to this one. And that side is congruent to that. Which one is it going to be? Well, we know it's going to be this one. Why? Because the side is not between the two angles. So we know we're going to finish with AAS. If we run through this, C is congruent to F. C is congruent to F. Let's see. C is... Oh, I see. Sorry. I wasn't thinking through this. Um, the reason we're not actually finishing the proof, we're trying to prove that you're allowed to do angle side angle. And the way they're going to do this is by showing that this third angle must be congruent to this third angle. Do you remember the third angles theorem? Well, before it had to be AAS could not be ASA because the angle or the side was not between the two angles. But now that I use the third angles theorem, now this problem became a ASA problem. So if I said angle A is congruent to angle D and angle B is congruent to angle E given then I would know that these angles must be congruent by the third angles theorem. That is like one of only two times you'll ever use this theorem. Then we know AC is congruent to DF because it is given. And now we know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And we wanted to prove this. So we just made it so that we can do it by ASA. This is kind of like the proof where I said, you're not allowed to use AAS. Try to prove it in a different way. All right. Now let's look at these and figure out if we would be able to use this information and anything in our geometry toolbox to finish with SSS, SAS, ASA 
or AAS. Those are the shortcuts we know. So right now we have an angle congruent to an angle, another angle congruent to an angle. Well, we have the vertical angles theorem, but that would be three angles congruent to three angles. Is that one of these? Nope. Okay, well, I guess that doesn't help us. Is there any way to show that this side is congruent to that side? No, I can't think of anything in our geometry toolbox that would allow us to know that. Um, do they tell us that this one is congruent to that so we could finish with AAS? No, and they don't even say like that's a midpoint or anything. It kind of looks like it is, but they don't tell us it is, and you can never assume in geometry. So it looks like this one is just not enough information. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Can these two triangles be shown uh, to be congruent by one of these? Well, we have an angle congruent to an angle, another one congruent to another one. Do we have anything else from our geometry toolbox? Do you see any vertical angles? Do you see any midpoints? Do you see any reflexive property? The reflexive property. That is just saying that the side of this triangle must be congruent to the side of that one because they're the same exact side. So this was an A, an A, and an S. So it's one of these two. Which one is it? Does the side go between the angles or not between the angles? The side is not between those two angles. Not between those two angles. So that one would be A, A. S. Okay, I want you to try this one. Try to use the given information and anything from your geometry toolbox to try to figure out how you'd be able to show that these ones are congruent. I'm telling you right now, it can be done. Just which one are you going to use? SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS? Well, we have the given got the other given. Do you see anything easy like midpoint, vertical angles theorem, reflexive property? I see the vertical angles theorem. So I have two angles and a side. So it's either AAS or ASA. Is the side between the angles or not between the angles? It is between the angles, so it is ASA. All right, let's move on to the next page. Okay. I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time on some of these because they're just not that beneficial for us to be thinking about the problems in a certain way. This one we could I want to go over try to figure out is there any way that this triangle and its overlapping triangle this one normally that one and that one can we show that these are congruent well we know these are right angles because it's given what do we know about right angles they are congruent we also know that this angle is congruent to that one is there anything else we can use well, do you see how this side right here is shared between the two, meaning that that must be congruent to that? This is two angles in a side. Is it AAS or ASA? Is the side between the angles or not between the angles? See, here's the two angles. Is the side between them? No, it's over here. So it is not that one. It's that one. These are like baby steps into proof. Let's say we looked at this one. A right angle and a right angle. That means they are congruent because all right angles are congruent. This angle is congruent to that angle because it's given. Do we have anything else? Do we have any vertical angles or reflexive property? Yep, we have the reflexive property. 
the reflexive property. I want to hammer this in. You can only say the reflexive property if it is a side or an angle shared by both of the triangles. Every year I have people who just want to throw out reflexive property. If it is not an angle or a side shared by both of the triangles, then you cannot use the reflexive property. This, you can see two angles are congruent to two angles and the side in between. So it's angle, side, angle. All right. I'm only going to do one of these. Let's just do this one. This says if DE was congruent to AB, and we also knew that D was congruent to A, then what else would we need to know to be able to use AAS? Well, we currently have an A and an S, so we know we need one more A, which is the angle that is going to need to be congruent. Is it E needs to be congruent to B, or is it F needs to be congruent to C, so that we use AAS? meaning the side's not between the angles. Well, it's got to be F is congruent to C, because then we have A, A, S. If it was the other angle, then it, the side would be between, and it wouldn't be A, A, S. It would be A, S, A. I want to remind you, the reason why we do this kind of little test on ourselves is because a lot of times you are going to have to ask yourself, what else do I need? Once you know what you need, then you can start going through your geometry toolbox and trying to figure out what tool can I use to get that extra information. In this case, what other, what in my geometry toolbox can I use to make sure those two are congruent? Well, in this case, it's impossible, but um, let's go ahead and take a look at some more. Okay, so on this, I want you to figure out, is it possible to state that the two triangles are congruent by SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS, or multiple? We've already gone over problem, a problem like this. Remember, this is, oh, they have an A, they have an S, so it's got to be one more A. What is the other A? What is the other angle that needs to be congruent to something? I guess I'll do one really quickly, and then we'll come back to this. Let's scribble those out. If we knew C was congruent to Z, and we knew AC was congruent to XZ, what is the other angle that we need to know is congruent so that we could have AAS? Would it be A is congruent to X, or would it be B is congruent to Y? It would be B is congruent to Y, because we do not want the side between the two angles for this. All right, cool. Now, as I said, this is kind of like a baby step into the proofs. This is just saying, like, hey, if you went through the whole process, how would you finish your proof? We're going to use the given, and we're going to try to use anything in our toolbox, reflexive property, vertical angles, midpoint, any of those, to see if we have enough information. Angle congruent to angle, side congruent to side. Is there anything else we have? We know the reflexive property. So it looks like it's ASS. Beyond that being cursing in a math class, was it one of the things that we said we were able to use? Is it one of these? Oh, this one has two S's and an A. That is because the angle is between the two S's. Is the angle between the two S's here? Nope. So not enough information. This one right here. Angle congruent to angle angle congruent to angle, and then a side. So it's either AAS or ASA. Which one of them is it? Is the side between the two angles? Nope. So it cannot be that. 
that's how I would finish my proof if this proof was given to me. The next one. An angles can grow into an angle, given. Sides can grow into a side, given. What else can we use from the geometry toolbox? Vertical angles theorem. Now we have this. That, that, this one. Okay, and then we had this triangle over here. I know this isn't that beautiful, sorry. Okay, looking at this, is the side included between the two angles? Some people say, yes, it is. Look, if I go this way, then you're skipping a side and you're skipping an angle. That is not what it means by included. Included means it is bordered by those two angles. Is this side bordered by two angles? Like this would be bordered by two angles? It's not. So that one would be AAS. Angle congruent to angle, side congruent to side, angle congruent to angle. We have two angles and a side. Is the side being bordered by the two angles? Is it included between them? Yes, it is. So it's angle, side, angle. And then the last one, you have a side congruent to a side, an angle congruent to an angle. What else can we use from our geometry toolbox? See any vertical angles? Nope, me either. See a reflexive property? Yep. Side, angle, side. SAS. Okay. So this, once again, these are baby steps. This is just saying, if you did the proof, how would you end it? Let's actually look at some proofs. Now on this one, let's say I broke the two triangles up. It says that that's congruent to that angle, this one's congruent to that one, and when they were stuck together, what else can we use from the geometry toolbox? Well, they had a shared side. So it looks like it's an A, an S, and then an A, because the angles are bordering slash the side is included between the two angles. So this is how you would do the proof. This is a paragraph proof, meaning you're just writing it all out in words. Given that LKM is congruent to JKM and angle LMMK is congruent to angle JMK, knowing those two things, and the reflexive property that says that KM is congruent to KM, then we know that the triangle LKM must be congruent to triangle JKM by ASA. That's one of the shortcuts we can use. You might be saying, but you, you stated an angle, then an angle, then a side. So shouldn't it be angle, angle, side? No, because you look at your diagram to figure out if it's angle, angle, side, not the order that you put it in your proof. These were both givens, so the person was extra lazy and efficient and said, well, if I only have to write given once, I'd rather do that than having to write given twice. Let's take a look at another proof. Okay. So on this one, um, all we have is a side so far. But what did I tell you? Whenever you guys have parallel lines, if you looked at your geometry toolbox, whenever you have parallel lines, only when you know the lines are parallel, you are most likely going to be using number 14, which is alternate to your angles theorem, alternate exterior angles, or corresponding. You know in these proofs you're not going to use SSIA because we only care about angles being congruent, not supplementary. So let's go back here. 
if these were my parallel lines and that would be my transversal, what angle would have to be congruent? That one and that one. And which reason? Corresponding angles theorem. Now, if it was that and that were parallel and that was your transversal, we would know that this one and this one would be congruent by the corresponding angle theorem. So if I erase this stuff, if we knew that that one was congruent to that one and this one was congruent to this one, then why are the two triangles congruent? We know we're going to finish our proof with ASA. Now that I have my plan, I am going to write it out. WU is parallel to YV because it's given. W, U, if those were the lines that they stated, which of the angles are we going to talk about being congruent? That one and that one. Angle, good. Okay, so we know that that would be angle Z, Y, V would be congruent to angle X, W, U. And that was corresponding angles theorem. Now this other set of parallel lines given would help us know that the other angles, angle Z, must be congruent to angle WXU, also by cat. This one was given, and then we can finish our proof by ASA. Question then becomes, why didn't they just, these were both givens. Why don't you just go over and state them together? It's because this one led to those angles being congruent, and this one led to those angles being congruent. If we just stated both of the parallel lines and the, both the angles, we wouldn't have known if you knew that that one leads to these being par, uh, congruent, and if this one, if you knew it led to those angles. Here is another proof. Okay, on this one right here, and sorry this one's going kind of long. If you knew that this thing bisected that angle, angle bisectors will result in two congruent angles. The angle is cut in half, which means those must be congruent. So that one must be congruent to that one. We already know that those are congruent. What else can we use from our geometry toolbox? Reflexive property. And that would be angle, angle, side. So I already know how I'm going to do this proof. It's going to be an angle, angle, side. So let's start with angle V is congruent to angle Y, given. I then know that WZ bisects angle V, W, Y, given. People always think it's these angles that are congruent, and that's not the case. It's these angles. So angle W, W, Z is congruent to angle Z, W, Y by def of angle bisector. And then we add WZ as congruent to WZ, reflexive, prop. And then we knew that we had enough to say that triangle VWZ is congruent to triangle YWZ by AAS. All right, I don't want to go much more than like a minute or two because we're already pushing it 30 minutes. Let me just see what the next page has in store for us. We're not going to do that page. Okay, cool. I'm going to talk through this proof, but I'm not actually going to do it. I'm going to talk about how I would do it because we're running really long here. We know that these are perpendicular, which means that they're right angles. Perpendicular, which means they're right angles. What do we know about all right angles? 
we know that they are congruent. We also have the vertical angles theorem. And lastly, they say T is the midpoint of PR. If T is the midpoint, then it must mean that that's congruent to that. So what? how would we finish this proof? If I split these up. Those are congruent. These are congruent. And by definition of midpoint, those are congruent. It's two angles and a side. Would it be AAS or ASA? Is the side between the two angles? Nope. So on this one, you would finish with AAS. The only new part here is that if that was part of the proof, you would say T is a midpoint of PR, which is given, and then you would state that PT was congruent to T. TR by def of midpoint. And then you do the rest of the proof. All right, let's finish this up. That was a long one. Just make sure you guys know that our shortcuts are SSS, SAS, ASA, and AAS. Those are the only shortcuts we know as of right now. How about this one? Don't know. We'll find out. What about this one? I don't know. We'll look into it. Those are the shortcuts you can use. All right, thanks for watching. Sorry that one went so long.